Hi friends and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all of my latest videos. Today I wanted to share with you this very excellent guide to data visualization from the Financial Times. It's actually been around for a little while, I only came across it recently though. If you want to get to it, ft.com slash vocabulary will take you there and it will actually link you up to this GitHub page. So if we come up the top, we can see we've got a few files here, uh, the key ones being PDF and also a image of PNG file with this image here. So you can see, and it's a little bit small, we're going to zoom in shortly, different situations where we will have data and the different kinds of graphs that we might use all together in one image. If we scroll down a little bit more, they give a really nice description about what's going on here. So they did this with the purpose of improving chart literacy and so they've done it for both their readers but even more so for their writers and staff and graphic designers to be using appropriate graphs. So we're going to have a look at these shortly. If we keep coming down they've got some links to a number of excellent resources all of these I would really recommend you have a look at if you're interested in data visualization. They then have each of those headings with the different graphs that they have used. So each graph is listed here with a one sentence when to use it. As we go down you can also see more hyperlinks to even more resources um, these ones quite a mix, some of their own, some uh, external, but some really great examples and also descriptions of what is going on. So we come all the way down, you can see every single one of those described in really nice helpful ways. Okay, so let's jump into this image have a look at it more closely okay so we've opened up the pdf it's downloadable so you can have it wherever you are working really handy and let's zoom in a little bit and so we can see coming across the top different situations uh, they've got a title brief description and examples so we've got deviation correlation, ranking, we've got distribution, change over time, magnitude, part to a whole, spatial and flow. Whilst I wouldn't call this an absolutely complete set of graphs, it is pretty comprehensive. This would be one of the best guides that I've seen. And we can nitpick some things. So for instance, for me as someone with, uh, with a PhD in statistics and a lot of expertise in data visualization, I would be pushing people away from pie graphs as much as I possibly could. Uh, but for them trying to be comprehensive, they've got a few things like that in there. But let's come back, let's have a look at some. So deviation, example, and they give examples that are very specific to the Financial Times. Uh, but of course you can think about your own situations where they might suit. So we've got diverging bars and stacked bars, spines, surplus deficit filled lines. So all of those are pretty similar kinds of graphs, so probably not super interesting. Next one, correlation. So when we're looking at association between two variables, they give a couple of examples. We've got scatter plot, column plus line graph, maybe not quite as useful. Scatter plot's going to be our main one. Uh, the bubble plot is an interesting one. Uh, if you've never seen it, jump onto YouTube and search Gapminder. You can see Hans Rosling uh, demoing in real time an animated bubble graph. Really shows you how you can use uh, color, shape, and movement uh, or animation to incorporate multiple variables into a graph in a meaningful way. So Gapminder on YouTube, uh, and you will see that's particularly good. Got a heat map down there as well. Heat map, really excellent. Uh, I work quite a lot in psychometrics, and so I've been using heat maps a fair bit as ways of portraying lots of correlations between a whole lot of different items within a psychometric tool. 
uh, coming across, I'm not going to go through every single one of these, we'll see some pretty common ones if we're looking at distributions, I mean histogram is a pretty pretty obvious one. Uh, violin plots, if you uh, uh, have, particularly I think if you're maybe slightly older, it's been a while since you studied, you may have covered the box and whisker but maybe not the violin. Same kind of concept, uh, but the violin is actually also plotting your distribution. So it just tells you a little bit more than your traditional box of whisker plot. Uh, they can be more popular, you see them more often in uh, descriptions than you used to. Coming across, and again, they, they for the most part start off with the more traditional ones. So you can see they kind of start off with line and column graphs before getting into things that are a little bit fancier. Um, the last one that I thought I would mention, I've got a couple here for flow, uh, and the one that I'm quite partial to, and again, possibly just because I've been using it recently, is the Sankey plot. So a Sankey plot, we would have categories and we would be measuring the movement between those categories uh, using these lines that would deviate. They'll normally be color coded. So I've been using them for some well being psychometrics. So collected over time, I can see how people's well being, which is scored into different groups, how they move between the groups. So someone might be very well in a particular time point, they might drop down to a lower rating, someone else might be particularly bad and we can see the flows of people that stay in that uh, very low well-being, those that move out of it, and just a really nice way to visualize those movements between a whole lot of groups. So slightly more unusual one, but actually really quite powerful. So I thought I'd highlight the Sankey as another graph in there. Okay, so let's have a zoom out. And Hopefully this has been interesting for you. I definitely recommend coming over to have a look, ft.com slash vocabulary. Uh, I have no association whatsoever. I just came across this and was impressed, thought that it was good, showed uh, lots of lots of useful information. Um, and really, I think it's, it's pretty helpful whether you are quite new to data visualization or perhaps slightly more seasoned. Uh, I think there is something you will get out of either this diagram or those links in the uh, on the GitHub page. So thanks for watching. Uh, please like the video if you found it helpful and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out.